Welcome to Partners in Prevention. I'm Jennifer Stein with Prevent Child Abuse Habersham. We bring to you monthly episodes about how you can help raise happy and healthy children. With October being SIDS Awareness Month, we have a very special guest visiting with us all the way up from Atlanta. Terry is with the state of Georgia. Um, you are the coordinator for the Safe to Sleep campaign. So Terry Miller, thank you for joining us. Um, when you think about SIDS, it's not a new topic, mm -hmm. um, but yet it's still one of the leading causes of deaths for infants between one month of age and a year of age. Mm -hmm. Will you help ex explain to the viewers, you know, what what is the prevalence of, of SIDS here in, in Georgia? Sure. Um, it is a it's still a, a large concern for us in Georgia um, mm -hmm. and, and nationally, actually. And so SIDS is Sun uh, Infant Death Syndrome. And um, in Georgia, our actual rates of SIDS are relatively low um, because most of our infant deaths are actually sleep-related infant deaths, commonly referred to as sudden unexpected infant death or SUID. Okay. So you might have heard those terms before, SIDS, SUIT, those, um, they get used interchangeably. But SIDS is really when an infant passes, no explanation, there's an autopsy, a death scene investigation, um, nothing is able to be determined why this normal, healthy child suddenly died. Okay. And so in Georgia, those numbers are relatively low. Our numbers for SUID, um, sleep-related infant deaths that are unexpected and unexplained um, are actually relatively high. Okay. So we average about three infant deaths a week. A week? A week, yes. And the majority, the vast majority of those are actually our suids. Um, and those are our infant sleep-related deaths. And so those are ones that when an investigation is done, and they look at the sleep environment and where the baby was positioned and all these other different factors, they're able to say the child died unexpectedly because they were normal and healthy and we didn't expect it to happen. Mm -hmm. However, there are things that are um, around the child and there are situations that may have contributed to the child's death. And so that's kind of the difference between the two terms. Okay. And so SIDS is a little lower um, as far as our numbers, but our sewage numbers are very high, and those are the types of things. Um, what we work to do is, it, is give people the information on how to um, prevent the sewage diffs, um, to give you recommendations on what you can do to reduce your risk and increase protection for the baby. So, so with SIDS then, you know, some of the, what are, might be some, some misconceptions that are out there that, um, you know, they caught something mm -hmm. or, you know, you, I know sometimes when you can't explain why something happens, mm -hmm. myths and facts start um, escalating as yeah. to why something happened because you're looking for answers. Absolutely. Um, w could you clear up some of those misconceptions? Sure, uh, especially with SIDS. Um, what happened is um, 20, 30, 40 years ago mm -hmm. when an infant would die, um, there was no investigation into the death scene. There was no review panels. Um, it was just an unexpected death. Um, okay. And since then, we do our investigations. That's why we understand things a little bit better than what we used to. That's why we have those different terms and why it can get confusing sometimes, especially right. for someone who grew up um, raising their children 20, 30 years ago, they would hear about a crib death. Um, mm -hmm. That's what they would refer to SIDS a lot of times. It's like a crib death. And so during those times when we really had no idea why these deaths were occurring, um, there were um, people would sometimes think that maybe immunizations okay. uh, was the cause because babies get a lot of immunizations. Yes. Um, and the majority of our um, SIDS and SUID deaths are occurring within that zero to four month period. Right. And so it's not uh, unlikely for the child to have had immunizations recently mm -hmm. if they passed during that time. And so some people started associating immunizations with 
risk of SIDS. Um, and that's not true. There have been numerous studies that have been done um, that are very valid. They have been reviewed by a peer, um, peer reviewed, and there's been no indication whatsoever that immunizations contribute to a SIDS mm -hmm. death in any way. Um, there are some concerns that um, you're going to have to help me with one of them. Well, which and one I want to say when I was reading, Terry, that actually immunizations can help decrease some of the, the mortality rate mm -hmm. for, for infants. But um, so as far as if a child were to have um, the croup or maybe they had an infection of uh -huh. some sort, that could not lead to something this drastic, correct? That's correct. Um, the, there is concern because a lot of the suicide deaths, the sleep-related deaths, um, are suffocation and mm -hmm. asphyxia. And so there's concern that if the child is actually um, sick already with some kind of respiratory illness, right. that that would lead to a greater risk. Um, at this time, there's no evidence to show that. Okay. Um, as long as there's not other factors. A lot of times there's a whole host of other factors that are involved if there's environmental tobacco smoke, if the child is ill, was preterm, all those different things combined could increase your risk, but just having a simple cold is not a risk for a SIDS death. Um, and so parents just need to continue what they would normally do as far as addressing the illness of the child without having to be too concerned about the fact that it'll lead to SIDS. Okay. Um, and we'll go into the, the recommendations later um, on for the other, how to actually prevent sleep-related deaths. But okay. as far as illness, it's usually not any kind of a concern for this specific issue. Very good. And so there again, vomiting, mm -hmm. spit up, Mm -hmm. these, these natural things that, that happen with little ones, yeah. um, that is not something that's going to cause them to pass away in their sleep. Correct. It's the yes. environmental factors that, that go with it. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, and with that, with that aspect, that choking and spit up, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fear is involved with placing a baby on his or her back. Right. Because the fear is that if they do spit up, that they'll then choke because they're on their back. But with the way that the human anatomy actually is, being on the back is actually a protective factor. Your um, windpipe, where you breathe, actually lays on top of the esophagus. Okay. So when you're on your back, the any kind of spit up would actually right. need to work against gravity to get down into the lungs. Um, and so it's actually safer to be on the back. When people hear their babies sputtering and coughing, that's actually the protective factor against choking. Okay. So, so it's, it's scary to hear. Yes. And you think, oh, he's choking. But they're doing what they need to do. Yeah, it's actually the protective Wonderful. factor against choking because okay. the coughing and sputtering, but yet it's, it's scary it's to hear. Scary. And well, so good. then a lot of times people want to put them on their belly, they'll think that it helps to clear the airway, when in fact that actually just increases the risk for something getting into the airway when they're on their belly. So Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, when we get back from break, we're going to learn more about uh, safe to sleep and the proper recommendations of how to put your infant to bed. Now showing on Windstream Cable Television Channel 4. Start your morning with a live on-the-air broadcast from WCON Radio. At 8, it's the Georgia Farm Monitor with the latest state and national agricultural news. Followed at 9 with David Sellers and his popular Art in the Mountains program, featuring arts and crafts and a lot more. And at 9.30, share a taste of the community with Jim Gear and friends. Windstream Cable Television Channel 4. It's what people are watching. Welcome back to Partners in Prevention. I'm Jennifer Stein with Prevent Child Abuse Habersham. In this episode, we've been discussing SIDS. This coming October is the Awareness Month. And so our guest is Terry Miller. She is um, the state of Georgia's coordinator for Safe to Sleep. Mm -hmm. um, our previous uh, segment, we've been discussing uh, the prevalence of, of SIDS and SUIDS, learning the difference of those, um, as well as some of the, um, the myths and confusion that we as parents, you know, we hear from our, our relatives mm -hmm. as, as to what that means and how we can avoid it happening, which are not always the truths. Mm -hmm. um, so you've been clearing those up for us. But what I'd like to learn more about now is um, with that, 
what are some of the risk, the things that we do that put our children more at risk? What are some of those risk factors for, for SIDS and, and sudden infant death? Sure. Um, one of the, the main issues that I think uh, we're really trying to work on clarifying is um, the things that we can do to, we like to say, increase the protection for our infants. Okay. Um, and increase the protection in the sense that we're giving them the environment they need in order to sleep safe. And that means every sleep, every time, including naps. naps. Yeah. That's the hard one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, it is when we leave the house, if we're visiting relatives, um, we find that many of our cases, I don't have an exact figure, but we do have many cases where it was a situational emergency where something changed in our routine. Okay. And so the baby was sleeping somewhere different. And so that's something to be uh, aware of too. And partly, um, or mainly, the issue is, is soft bedding. We want our infants to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, we want them to feel loved and snuggled. And yes. our vision of that is fluffy quilts and blankets and things that we handmade or that relatives yes. made for us and we put them in. And we all have that vision of the nursery, you know, with the beautiful crib bumpers and everything. Uh, for infants, however, this is a dangerous situation mm -hmm. that's not necessarily an, um, a, an environment of love and comfort and snuggliness. It's actually suffocation risk. And okay. so uh, what we're working on is trying to help people to understand that with an infant, they're fresh, new to the world, their lungs are new, their respiratory system, they didn't have to use it in the womb, and so they're trying to regulate all these body processes. Yes. And they're brand new. Um, they're still learning to regulate their body temperature. Mm -hmm. They're learning how to eat. They're learning how to sleep. And so it's not easy. They have a lot on their plates. Right. Right. <laughs> and so um, with an infant, when they get into these environments that are very soft and there's a lot of pockets and places for them to get wedged into, mm -hmm. up against, we think a lot of times when we hear suffocation that it has to be something rather dramatic, um, a bag or the head or something tied against the right. face or something. But with infants, um, they lack the ability, the arousal ability to say, I'm not getting enough air. I need to turn my head and take a deep breath. A lot of times they still don't have that developed. Right. So they can just be up against something that's blocking the fresh air, um, even if there's a space in between. But the lack of oxygen is there and they keep rebreathing. The carbon dioxide is coming out mm -hmm. and they're not getting any fresh air. And so the suffocation is very slow and it takes over a period of time. Right. And so soft bedding, um, some issues with uh, firm surfaces. Okay. Uh, the mattress needs to be firm. That's a big one is um, people want to put them on pillows or on other soft Cozy surfaces. Cozy and comfy. Yeah. Right. And the, the babies, since they don't weigh a whole bunch, they don't need as much cushion. And that's one of the things I hear most from parents is they, especially in a bassinets or a pack and play, mm -hmm. it's very thin. They're right. not very comfortable. They're very firm. For us, for a baby, they're not even noticing because they're just not heavy enough where they need to have a whole bunch of cushioning. Okay. And so that fear that we're not providing comfort for our infant isn't necessary. We don't need to worry about that. They're comfortable, they're fine, and they're safer when they're on a firm surface. Right. Um, so. Well, and with that, so you're helping us describe what a safe sleep environment looks like with mm -hmm. some of the, the visuals that you're giving us. Um, what are some other things that would be incorporate, important to incorporate into a, a child's uh, sleeping environment? Sure. One of the I'll just do the ABCs. Okay. This is our. Very good. I like easy <laughs> to our, remember things. This is our quick and easy, and we recognize that every family is different, every infant is different, mm -hmm. um, and so these are very broad. Um, based recommendations, okay. but it's a quick and easy way. Any situation you're in where your child is sleeping, you can look at it quickly and remember what you're Very what you good. need to look for. So we say alone, which is often a scary word when a parent hears alone being applied to their baby. Um, but what we mean is just on their own sleep space. 
okay. um, by themselves without other siblings, without a parent. They can be close to you, they should be close to you, but they need their own sleep space. They need to be alone so that no one can accidentally roll over on them. Mm -hmm. um, the weight of an arm is enough to depress a child's diaphragm that can cause suffocation. And as I stated okay. before, when we think about how young they are, they're not able to push your arm away or give you a jab in the ribs and, you know, move your arm, mom. <laughs> right, Because <right, right. laughs> they're infants. And so that's one of the things, like, when we have to think about this with these tiny ones. Um, just a quick fact on that, uh, 90, over 90% 90 of our infant deaths occur during that zero to four month period. So this is for our tiniest, tiniest. Nine out of 10 of the deaths are occurring during that time. And that's where I was saying the vulnerable infant, they're just very yes. young. Okay, and so A is alone mm -hmm. in their own sleep space, uh, but close to you. B is on their back, which I think a lot of people have heard because of the back, back, back to, to sleep, sleep campaign that's been going on for many years. Um, but on their back, they sleep the safest on their back, without a doubt. No side or stomach sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes naps. You and I discussed earlier where I did right. that wrong. Right. I was um, putting my baby to sleep on his back every single night without a doubt. And then as time went on eventually here and there, I would do stomach sleeping. And that really increases your risk. Okay. Um, and that's something that just kind of when you hear back to sleep, yes. you think sleep, nighttime. Okay. But we mean back to sleep every sleep, including naps consistently every single time back to sleep. And then our C is crib. Okay. Um, and crib basically means uh, not just a crib. It's a lot more complicated than saying, just put the baby in a crib and you'll be fine. Right. Because that crib actually, as we already discussed, needs to be free of all those extra things, stuffed animals, quilts, bumper pads. Yeah. All yeah, those cute all things. those cute things need to go away. They can come back, but okay. later. <laughs> well, speaking later. of coming back, we will be right back after this message. I want to hear more about C. Okay. okay. With cable television production studios in Habersham and Towns Counties, you're watching Windstream Cable Television Channel 4, home of local origination programming in North Georgia. From weekly church services to sports and community events, we've got you covered. Join us 24-7 for local programming at its best. Windstream Cable Television, it's what people are watching. We're back with Partners in Prevention. I'm Jennifer Stein with Prevent Child Abuse Habersham, and we've been discussing SIDS this month. Um, our guest is Terry Miller. She is the State Coordinator for Safe to Sleep, and wonderful information you've been sharing with us, but right before break, you were describing mm -hmm. the A, Bs, and Cs of a mm -hmm. safe sleep environment. Um, you went over the A and the B, and you were talking about the C being uh -huh. the crib. Uh -huh. Share a little bit more about that where you um, we're discussing that environment. Sure. Uh, so when we say crib, mm -hmm. it's pretty much, it, it can be a bassinet if you have a, a pack and play or a play yard with right. a little bassinet. So crib is used a little loosely, but it's where the baby sleeps. Mm -hmm. And we, so we want that environment. That's the, the major change that has occurred. It's not really a change, it's an expansion. So we went from the back to sleep campaign to the safe to sleep campaign. Right. The major thing being this is Sleep C. Environment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, is making sure that the crib, no pillows, no stuffed animals, nothing else in the crib. So we want a crib that has a very firm mattress. Um, you want to make sure that it fits appropriately, that there's no places where the child can get wedged or okay. caught. Um, the new crib standards are very rigorous, and so better hardware, the slats are thinner, um, or closer together, I should say. Right. Um, and so all that's very rigorous, but if you're using a crib that has maybe been handed down, yes. um, double check it. Make sure your hardware is tight, everything's secure, that mm -hmm. there's no way there can be a gap. Because we know, as especially as kids age, they, they roll around, they move around a lot, and so you need to make sure all that is very secure. Um, if you take a soda can, and if it can fit through the slats, that's not really safe because that's actually large enough for the child to get wedged into okay. in between the slats. So that's where now they're closer together, but our older cribs, 
they're further apart. Um, and the problem with that is sometimes we did actually have head entrapments and those kind of things. Right. So check out your crib, see yes. if it looks good. You can go to a website, it's a Consumer Product Safety Commission, so mm -hmm. cpsc.gov. Okay. Look for any recalls, that's for your car seats, cribs, all that good Wonderful. stuff. So you can double check anything that you have to make sure that there's been no major recall. Um, drop down side cribs, yes. where the one side comes down, those are no longer sold. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, they have okay. been banned. And okay. so if you have one of those, <laughs> double check it and you can usually right. get the hardware to make sure that it doesn't drop down anymore. Too many entrapments were occurring where a child was dying okay. because they were getting stuck. Um, and so that's crib. So we have alone, back, and crib. And those are our major um, kind of general ways. So no matter where you're at, at a relative's house during the holidays, those kind of things. Look for a place where the child can be alone on their back. And when we say crib, maybe you don't have a crib there. Right, you're at so, grandma's house. It's yeah, Thanksgiving she dinner. She hasn't used one in a while, mm -hmm. so she doesn't have one. So where will you put the child? Right. That's when you think back to, I need a firm surface. Okay. I don't need any soft bedding. I don't need any pillows. I don't need any of that extra fluffy stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can make a little pallet on the floor and put the child there, okay. um, which is safer and better than placing the child on an adult bed and then stacking the pillows around the child. Um, Which we've all done. Yes. You know, worry about <laughs> rolling over or things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And we do it to protect a child, to make sure that they don't fall off and those kind of things. Um, and unfortunately, we do have cases where the very items that were put to protect a child right. contribute to the death because of that suffocation issue. Um, as they get older and they can start to root and they kind of nuzzle mm -hmm. into places, they can't get themselves out. Okay. And so we have to make sure that there's nothing for them to be able to get up to and against. And, do that. Um, and so, yeah. Touch on just a, a little bit like sleep wedges mm -hmm. and boppy pillows. Mm -hmm. um, I know sometimes when an infant, when you can't give them cold medicine and it's uh -huh. their first cold and you're miserable as a parent because you can't soothe them. Yes. So we're taught to prop the mattress up and put mm -hmm. something underneath it, mm -hmm. but some might choose to do other mechanisms. A any concerns there that we should be aware of? Absolutely. Um, any kind of positioning device, um, be it a bobby or a wedge, um, unless you have a physician actually writing a prescription saying you need to use this. Okay. Um, you should never use them. They are not safe, regardless of what the manufacturer might tell you. Right. Um, they are not tested. Um, the issue is that they're intended to do one thing, but they might actually cause another problem mm -hmm. during sleep while the child is sleeping and moving around. It's very hard to keep that wedge exactly where it should be. Right. Or the boppy is supposed to prop the child up. Well, what happens when the child rolls over, they move right. around, and we find them a lot of time contributing to the suffocation of a child. And so we need to just have all that stuff out because we cannot you can't watch them 24 seven. Right. So we have to make sure that there's nothing there that can hurt them. And we've had many recalls of items that were intended to go into the crib, make it better for the child, that have actually turned around being the things that helped contribute to their death. And so now they can't be sold anymore. Okay. So there are still things out on the market, but we want baby on his back. No side sleeping, no stomach sleeping. Okay. <laughs> and even when they start to roll over and they're more mobile in the mm -hmm. crib, mm -hmm. they still should not have a pillow or, or loose blankets. Correct. How do we keep a baby warm in the winter? Mm -hmm. you know, you've got this beautiful quilt that was yes. made for your child. Uh -huh. How do we keep them warm then if you're not gonna put wrapping uh, of a, of, of for an infant? Absolutely. So one of the things, because especially you have baby showers, you receive all these beautiful, wonderful things. Right. Um, keep them, hold off on using them. When the child is getting older, these, these recommendations are for infants. And so okay. that's your zero to 12 months. Okay. So, and all babies are different. So. Maybe it doesn't have to be exactly 12 months, but we're looking for that time frame that we keep our, our cribs clear. So when the baby is able to roll over um, from back to stomach, uh, that's even more dangerous time to have crib bumpers. Okay. So we're gonna wanna definitely make sure we have those quilts and crib bumpers out. When they can roll back to front, front to back, 
that's when we're feeling a little safer. But if they can roll to their stomachs, then they can really wedge themselves up against something. That's why you got to have those crib bumpers away so they can get fresh air when they get wedged against the crib okay. slats. Okay. They will not hurt themselves. It's scary when they get caught, when their little arms get stuck. It's scary, right, right. but it's way better, better than, than a suffocation. Yeah, and there, oh, there's gosh. been no evidence, no medical records that we can find where a child has suffered a serious injury due to getting stuck in a crib slack. Mm -hmm. um, keeping them warm, we want to dress our babies one layer more than what we're wearing, okay. than what we're comfortable wearing. Okay. We have a bad habit of kind of overheating our babies. Yes. They are still, as we mentioned earlier, that thermal regulatory system is getting, mm -hmm. they're getting used to it. So we overheat them, we really stress them out. It's okay. very stressful for babies. So we don't have to make it as hot. Um, so those big quilts are too much. Okay. So um, a long sleeve, uh, Footed the sleeper. Pouch. Okay, mm -hmm. or the footed sleeper. The little sleepers or the sleep sacks, the gowns, those kind of things mm -hmm. that just sleep over them. They're called wearable blankets. So Very it's a blanket, good. but it's wearable. You can use one of those, um, just one of the onesies that has the little feet in them, those okay. kind of things. That'll be plenty, especially if you get a fleece one. Plenty to keep them warm because mm -hmm. they're all inside and so it traps all that body heat that. and they'll be perfectly warm. Well, Terry, I hate that we're out of time because there's so much that we can cover about this important topic. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that we have the Safe to Sleep campaign, yeah. and the month of October is going to be fantastic with educating and bringing awareness mm -hmm. um, to our families. So thank you for joining us. Um, viewers, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.